Welcome back to Soul Connections. This Thursday and Friday night, we will be celebrating our foundational festival, Shavuot or Shavuos. Many ask the question of why Shavuos has no specific laws and details of do's and do nots associated with it. It's not like Pesach where we sit at a big Seder and we have all the items from the Seder plate and discuss the story of Pesach. Nor is it like Sukkot, where we have the obligation to build a Sukkah and shake the Lulav and Esrog. Or like Rosh Hashanah, where our obligation is to hear the Shofar. Or like Yom Kippur, where we fast. There are no specific or major laws associated with this festival. Commonly, we associate Shavuos with the eating of dairy foods, such as cheesecake, linces, ice cream, lasagnas, pastas. It's the festival known as the Milchik Festival, the Milk Festival. So the question is, why are there no major laws associated with this festival? In order to answer, we have to look back at what Shavuos is all about. And we know from last time, we mentioned the festival of Shavuos celebrates the Jewish people's connection to the Torah. It's the time that we accepted the Torah into our lives, God's wisdom, God's laws. We said, we will do the commandments and we will attempt to learn them also. We took on a verbal contract and we heard the first two commandments from God and the remaining eight from Moses. We didn't receive anything physical. We heard it. We took a verbal oath between us and Hashem that we would heed to his Torah, to his commandments. So on Shavuot, customarily, we read the Ten Commandments. This year, there are many communities around the world that will not be able to share this experience with their community members. So it doesn't become the cornerstone of the festival. And even if one doesn't necessarily hear the Sarah said Dibros, the Ten Commandments in Shul, we are still able to fulfill the basic obligations of the festival. So the question is, why is this festival such an anti-climax or seemingly an anti-climax after a Pesach Seder, after the counting of the Omer, we come to Shavuos, we eat dairy, we read the Ten Commandments if we're able to, and that's about it. It seems like a regular festival. How come? When Hashem gave the Jewish people the Torah, He was telling us a very important message of His purpose in the Torah. Now, when Hashem created the world, He already had the Torah and all its details set out many, many, many moons prior to the creation of the world, so to speak. So when He gave the Jewish people the Torah, when He brought down the Torah into the world, he was giving over the message that he didn't want his wisdom to be stuck in the spiritual worlds. He wanted it to come down into this earthly realm, this very physical and crass realm. We know that Hashem can do anything and he didn't want to just be defined through the infinite and through the infinity of the world and space and time. He wanted to come into a very crass, lowly, physical place. Therefore, he brought his wisdom down and gave it to his people, the Jewish people. And we said last time that when we look at the Torah, everything we do as a people, all of the mitzvot have a physical counterpart. So God's goal was to make a dira batachtoin, according to the Kabbalah, and many sources throughout the entire of Torah, his purpose was to make a dwelling place in this lowest realm, in this low realm. He wanted his wisdom to permeate the physical world. He didn't want anything to be really esoteric about the Torah. He wanted it to be very practical. He wanted it to be merged in and unified with the physical world. This is the reason why there are no major laws associated with Shavuot. Hashem's purpose in giving us the Torah 
was that it should be infused into our very normal lives, our daily routine, that the mitzvot, his guidance, should be infused into every single thing we do from when we wake up in the morning to when we go to sleep at night. At every stage of our day, there is another way we can infuse Torah and mitzvot, whether it's saying Modeh Ani in the morning, thanking Hashem for having a soul back in our body, washing Nagelvasa, washing our hands in the traditional hand washing way, making a blessing before food or after food, davening, saying Tfilis, putting on Tfilin, lighting Shabbos candles, kissing a mezuzah, and the list goes on, eating kosher food. Everything that Hashem gave us was to be infused into our daily routine. And this is really the message, message of Shavuot. Yes, there are no esoteric mitzvahs that we do. We don't build strange huts and we don't blow the shofar, this strange you know, ram's horn. We don't shake this lemon and this palm branch together. Everything we do on Shavuos is very normal because we're tapping into this message of what Shavuos is really about. We are rejuvenating and renewing our connection that we have with Hashem and with the Torah. And we are saying that we will infuse our days, our weeks, our months and years with the Torah. We don't need to take ourselves out of our daily routine in order to connect to Hashem and the Torah. It can be right here, right now. We don't need to change anything physical what we do. All we need to do is infuse our regular daily actions with a bit more spirituality. The options are endless. They're not hard. I encourage you this Shavuos, this Thursday night, as we light the candles and we make a bracha, 80 minutes before sunset, and we bring in this festival of Shavuos, think about your connection to the Torah. Think about your connection to Judaism. What does it teach you? What is one extra thing that you can do to strengthen your connection with the Torah this coming year? That's the message of Shavuos. We want to bring the Torah right down here, into the here and the now, and into our daily routine. We're not taking it up, but we're bringing it down from heaven to earth. I want to wish you a Chag Sameach, happy Shavuot. Enjoy the festival. Enjoy the cheesecakes and the blinces. And we'll see you next time. Chag Sameach.